All right. It's Prop the Mic, presented by Props.cash. It's Friday, November 3rd. Beautiful morning here in Los Angeles. Just got finished celebrating a little Dia de los Muertos at my son's school this morning um, and back home just in time to record the big Sunday pod with you. How's, uh, how's things in New York, Dave? Uh, things in New York are good. I always, I always find it interesting how things are done in California. It's like there's, there's no like uh, acknowledgement of election day, but you got uh, Dia, 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 Dia de, de los, los Muertos. Muertos. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome, man. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Looks that's like you, you guys were having fun this morning. Yeah, it was a blast. Um, what was a blast also was last night's uh, performance by PTM, um, just That's crushing, uh, crushing it. Especially, we kind of kind of was like a push on the NFL side, which has kind of been the story of late. We've we've um, you know uh, been really putting a lot of attention towards NBA, but we totally crushed NBA last night. So yeah. uh, just keep adding to that total of units, and uh, we're just going to get better and better as as the season goes on. Yeah, if I didn't try to force a couple of those uh, blocks and steals. Uh, picks we would have done even better so uh yeah the uh the models uh seems to be cranking out uh what we wanted to and uh the results have been positive in the, the early goings here yeah absolutely but um but we do love football and uh and i think we're gonna we were just talking before the show i think we're gonna continue to like really put most of our energy into this friday show because um two reasons one is there's the most number of games so mm-hmm. we're able to pick our spots and find the best value also the lines are out you know days in advance so um, I was just looking at like some of the props we're going to present today and, and you can look at like FanDuel and DraftKings still has like a significant difference on a lot of these. So lots of value here as opposed to the NBA. By the time we look at the props, most of them uh, are fairly normalized across the books, less value to go shop for. So mm-hmm. I think NFL is still great. Um, and we're going to put most of this energy into this Friday show. And I promise a good one today. So you ready to dive into it? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Uh, let's start with, uh, Chicago two and six, uh, a mainstay on the PTM show. We always talk about Chicago uh, up against New Orleans, four and four. Uh, New Orleans is minus eight at home. Total is 41 and a half. What do you like in this? All right. So, so I got a, I got a fly in here. It's uh, distracting me. Um, That's good luck. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So based on the matchups in this game, uh, our best uh, spot to target here are overs in the uh, Chicago Bears running game. Um, I'm not going to bore you guys with all the stats. Just, just know that I've, we've gone through it. This is what this is what the matchups uh, say. And instead of me reading you off a whole bunch of rankings and whatnot, I think uh, we could just jump into it. Um, Donta Foreman, uh, I like his rushing yards over 36 and a half, uh, minus 114 on Fanduel. Uh, you look at the last two weeks since they've had the uh, the change at quarterback here. He has eight. He's had 89 and 65 uh, rush yards. Um, Last couple of weeks, Jonathan Taylor crushed this. His line was 66 and a half. He finished with 95. Zach Moss, 41 and a half. So in that same ballpark that Foreman is here, he finished with 66. Um, so I think this is a good spot. Uh, Travis ATN went under his line, but still ran for 53 yards in that game. Um, mm-hmm. So I think this shapes up well for Foreman uh, to go over the rush yards. I also thought this was nice. Um, it's not available on, uh, it'll, it'll be out later on some of the other books, but right now it's on Caesars and uh, BetMGM, I think, for his rush plus receiving. Uh, 46 and a half. And, and uh, I got it yesterday at plus 104 on Caesars, which I thought was really nice. Uh, his last two weeks, he's had 120 and 67 rush plus receiving yards. Um, I like it. He had 15 and 16 rush attempts the last two weeks. So the attempts are up. He also had five targets uh, in the air last week. Um, the reason I, uh, I don't love his receiving yards alone, that's, a, that's something that we've been going to quite a bit, is running back <laughs> receiving by running backs. New Orleans actually has allowed the second fewest receptions and targets to uh, opposing running backs. Um, so I kind of like this 46 and a half rush plus receiving. I think he can get there just on the, the rushing yards alone uh, very likely in this game, and I, I love the, the plus money. Um, and, and, and seeing as though he had five targets last week, I think a little bit of extra receiving uh, w- will help this uh, go over. So I like both those plays. Yeah, I mean, it's almost the same line. And the reason yeah. why is the receiving yards is only four and a half receiving yards. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> is that appealing it, to you? It is appealing. You know, I like anything I under like seven. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I still think the receiving is a good play, despite um, what you said about uh, New Orleans defense against running backs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and mostly just because of this, right? He had three receptions in the previous game uh, on five targets. I just I don't think it's going to take a whole lot. Although you got to be careful with the receiving, right? We, we saw with Pacheco last week, you can get in a hole, uh, yeah. minus 10 receiving yards, and then you're like, you know, then you're, yeah, you're really stuck. Tough to get out of that one, yeah. So I do agree. I think your best approach is rushing yards. Second best is probably rush and receiving. And if you want to kind of be greedy, you can uh, go for the receiving as well. Ooh, four and a half. 
I must. I didn't see that one. Man. I don't know if that was out when I was uh, doing my picks yesterday. But um, yeah, that's, that's a nice. tiny line. Yeah, that's a very yeah. tiny line for a starting running back, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. What else? Uh, anything else on the? Yeah, Chicago I think we side? can also go to the quarterback here, Tyson Bajant. I think uh, I like his rush yards as well. Twelve and a half. I mean, that's kind of um, what he's been. Uh, kind of touted about he had 24 against uh vegas last week uh and i just like the recent history so trevor lawrence ran for 59 baker mayfield 31 jordan love 39 uh bryce hall 34 and those were all on on lines that were like you know 15 17 10 for baker so they all uh crushed this so i think this is a a nice spot for him on a nice low line here yeah yeah it's pretty good um i mean he, he didn't have a ton of attempts he had two attempts his first game three attempts last week uh but uh but yeah no it seems it seems with uh good secondary coverage uh he might be forced to scramble a bit so uh um, yeah. seems like a good play i like that one all, all right. right um anything else on the uh, chicago side before we go to new orleans uh no that's all i all got right. let's go to uh let's go to new orleans i think i know who you're gonna play here i don't have any picks on new orleans actually. oh really yeah, yeah all right i just got one spot here i think um i think alvin kamara uh at uh this says 40 and a half but that's a points bet. FanDuel has us at 39 and a half receiving yards and DraftKings has us as low as 32 and a half receiving yards. So this, yeah. is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. When I, uh, I said this in the intro, you get a seven yard difference. That's over a 20% difference um, between FanDuel and DraftKings. Uh, and it actually makes a difference, right? It, it uh, allows Kamara to clear in four out of five games as opposed to three out of five. Uh, but we're, really what's more important is the recency, right? Uh, he just seems to be picking up steam. Uh, Chicago's pass defense, not great. Um, in fact, they're giving up the third, third most passing yards in the league. Um, I just think, uh, this is a, a prime target, uh, for Carr, And I think, uh, I think, uh, Kamara's going to go over again, 32 and a half receiving yards. Yeah. It's a great spot to target against, uh, Chicago, um, uh, receiving by, uh, running backs. I think they're, they're, uh, on the season here, like fourth in receptions. They might be like, I think third in, uh third in targets um so yeah this is a uh, nice spot uh i was kind of just digging more into the based on the the matchups i had the model here dig, i was digging more into the chicago side but uh yeah i think that's a great uh play i'm glad you called that out awesome i just gotta ask you i was we were texting at like midnight last night about this um so i'm, I'm very much into this concept of let's find guys uh receivers for quarterbacks that aren't very good um yeah. and let's play their longest pass under nice. so i'm just gonna throw this one out just as a fun one so we got bajan is the quarterback who I'm saying is not particularly good. Uh, he's thrown through for 162 yards last week. He was just throwing picks left and right. The receiver that I'm targeting potentially, and I'm a little worried about this, but um, longest reception, let's look at Tyler Scott, who's a rookie. Um, so his longest reception is nine and a half yards. Um, you can see he only has eclipsed that in one game uh, mm. so far this season. Although I think the data point for this uh, um, Chargers game is not there. So I got to look at that one. But um I don't know. What do you think? His targets are, are up, but I just don't know if this guy's going to get a 10 yard reception. It seems like there's a lot of zeros there, a lot of red. I, um, I think that's, uh, that's nice. So you, you would lean, you know, I was thinking about this. You think it's better to, to take your chances on one of the receivers, as opposed to just like fading the longest pass for the quarterback for these, these uh, garbage yeah. quarterbacks. I don't that's know. another way to do it. I mean, basically what I'm, what I'm targeting is guys who have like a 25% hit rate or lower for the mm -hmm. season with a quarterback that has a uh, total passing yards under 200 yards, gotcha. Some, something like that. Right. Gotcha. Um, this guy fits that mold. Although he did have an 11 yard um, catch last week. It's not showing up on props that cash. So just to be fully transparent, he has gone back to back week. So I might pass on Tyler Scott just cause he's um, he's a bit of an anomaly. His targets are on the rise um, mm -hmm. and he's a rookie. So I'm not sure if he's the best data set, but let's see if we can find another one as we go along. There's plenty of other bad quarterbacks we're about to talk about. Yeah. Even uh, I'm looking at Mooney. You didn't look at Mooney on this one. Uh, yeah, Mooney's another one. Although he is kind of a deep ball threat, but uh, yeah. but he he does fit the uh, the 25 percent mold too, roughly. Um, so he could be a good target. Uh, Michael Thomas, you know, probably also in there. So lots lots of good. Um, I'm sorry, no, he's on New Orleans. Lots of good options though. But we'll uh, yeah. we got another game coming up that's got two right. prime targets. So let's see if we can talk about that there. All right. All right. All right, next, let's go to Tampa Bay at Houston. Tampa Bay's three and four on the season. Houston's four, uh, sorry, three and four. Also, uh, Houston is minus three. Total is 39 and a half. Uh, what is standing out for you here that made you choose this game? Not not a super appealing game for you on, on uh, that first glance? Uh, not, definitely not Tampa Bay. Houston's kind of fun to watch. Um, yes. 
I think I think they've been an exciting team. So hopefully that's where most of your picks are. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the um, place we want to target here is uh, overs in the Houston passing game. Uh, that the reason why uh, they have a great uh, pass block win rate and it's actually been improving week over week. Um, they had a 53% average pass block win rate in weeks one through four. That jumped up to 69% in weeks five through eight. So they're getting significantly better as the season's gone on. Um, and Tampa Bay's defense has the eighth worst pass rush win rate. Uh, so I like two plays on CJ Stroud here. Uh, over 236 and a half passing yards, minus 114 on FanDuel. Um, he's gone over in five of seven. Uh, you probably have to bring that line. Uh, did the line go up? You can still get it. Uh, 36, 36 and a half. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, he's gone over in five of seven this season, but under in his last two. So I think he's probably uh, due for a little bit of um, a little bit of a bounce back here. This is my favorite. Every quarterback except Derek Carr has cleared their passing yard line against Tampa Bay this season. Look at that. That's a lot of green on that chart. They just passed it. There you go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. That's nice. That's very nice. Yeah. I also think um, I wouldn't even necessarily say this is just like. Um, like a two week regression. I think New Orleans and Carolina are both top seven uh pass yeah, defenses. Pretty decent. Yeah. Like great. Yeah. So I think uh he's just kind of come up against a stretch of two good teams. And now he's going up against Tampa Bay, who actually has a pretty poor pass defense. So pretty uh, so I think it's I think recency is pulling the line down. And uh but I think the history prior to that is enough to say go for it. So I like that spot. Nice. Um, I also like his pass attempts here. Um, 31 and a half uh, pass attempts, minus 115 on DK. Same deal. Every quarterback, this time except Desmond Ritter, has cleared their pass attempt line against Tampa Bay. Quarterbacks are averaging 36 and a half attempts per game against Tampa Bay. Uh, and we oh, just man. need a nice little 31 and a half from CJ here. Yeah, it's gone up to 32 and a half. You still like it there? Um, it's gone up to 32 and a half. Yeah, probably still... Uh... I think there'll be a lot of passing. I feel like there's going to be a lot of a lot of passing in this game. It's 32 and a half everywhere. Uh, this says bet MGM. You might be able to still get it at 31 okay. and a half. So, right. um, but yeah, like you said, um, you know, Desmond Ritter had 25 and everybody else is like yeah. through the roof. So I know averaging 36 that. and a half. That includes, that includes that 25 from Ritter too. So yeah, yeah. I think this is, this is a nice spot here. Um, and then, He's got to be, if he's going over on all this uh, passing, he's got to be passing to someone. Uh, so I like an over on Nico Collins here, over 58 and a half receiving yards, minus 114 on FanDuel. Uh, if you look at his home splits. Uh, home? Yeah, yep. look at that. The guy crushes wow. at home. Three for three at home. 80, 168, and 146. Uh, yeah, I think he's, this is the connection that's going to feast on Sunday. Uh, so we're going with Collins and Stroud. Yeah, even even in his last ten home games, right? It's not just this season, but even dating back to last season, right? Mm -hmm. He had some uh, some really big uh, home games there. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, no, I like this. Uh, let's see for receptions too. Receptions might not be a bad play either. Four and a mm -hmm. half. What's what's um, the uh, odds? Minus one ten. Oh, it's not bad. That's pretty good. So yeah, I mean, again against New Orleans, he struggled. Um, oh, that was home. Let's see what he's done overall. Uh, so it's been it, that's why it's been three straight weeks uh, down. Mm -hmm. Um, but this could be a bounce back spot for him um, going up against a weaker defense. So, but yeah, let's go with the yards. He's kind of a deep ball threat. So he, he might be able to pick up most of those yards in a, in a single catch. So I like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice. Anybody else on, uh, on Houston? Uh on Houston, one place to look, I, I don't think there was lines out yet, but we actually have the models uh, telling us to look at uh, receptions by running backs. Um, so I, uh, or, you know, either receiving yards or receptions by uh, running backs. So, Damian Pierce, I don't know if he has lines out yet uh, for receiving one. No, no. No. So uh, that's something I'm going to look at later this weekend, but that was uh, that was just another one I wanted to call out. My only other play is I got one play on the Tampa Bay side. It's got to be Rashad White. I mean, you of play course, you know, I, it's, if Tampa Bay's <laughs> playing, you know it's Rashad White. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, so the model's telling us to fade the Tampa Bay running game. So we've cashed on White in his receiving yards. I think we've also cashed on a couple unders on his uh, rushing uh, and we're going to go back to that again. Under 49 and a half rush yards, minus 110 on DK. Um, he's only gone over in two of seven uh, this season. Uh, he's, a, he's a bigger part of the uh, passing game. And based on all the line play and matchup data uh, telling us to fade the, uh, the run game here, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Rashad White under 49 and a half yards. Nice. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, look at his rush attempts over the last uh, three weeks, seven, 13, and nine. So, mm. um, so he's, he's barely getting the ball in the, uh, in the run game. He's getting the ball a lot. Um, Receiving wise, what he's got for receptions. Yeah. 
uh, three, six, and seven. So yeah. they seem to just have kind of changed uh, his purpose in the, in the offense. So yeah, nice. Houston is right. You know, we know we we know that Cleveland is the best uh, defense at stopping the run. Well, as the seasons progressed, Houston is number two. So great run run stop defense here. Uh, that's why we're targeting this under. Yeah, um, less strong in the passing game, right? Houston is. Houston is less strong in the passing game. Pass correct. defense, yeah, yeah. Their pass um, defense. Uh, I take that back. No, they are also uh, second. They've moved up to second in uh, pass rush win rate. Okay, really good. Yeah, I mean the the twenty third overall. They're giving up two hundred thirty six passing yards. So I think I'm just talking about I, just win rate now. Yeah, just the the line. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like K. Dotton for three and a half receptions at right. um, plus one forty five. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, He's done this in two straight weeks, and he's done this in three out of seven. So that's why you're getting the plus money because he's only had a three out of seven hit rate. Um, uh, and then even dating back to last year, even with Brady in place, he was only uh, nine for 24, But um, including this season and last season. But what I what I saw was that uh, tight ends have had a pretty good um, time against uh, Houston. So Hayden Hurst had zero catches last week. I don't know what happened there. Um, but um, uh, Kyle Pitts had seven. Johnny Smith had six, uh, Ingram had seven. So you've got three data points that say um, uh, tight ends versus Houston might be a good matchup. What do you think? Uh, seems good. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice low line. Um, I like that. I like the fact that uh, I think his targets are up last. Yeah, six targets each of the last two weeks. Uh, I think right. That's uh, that's pretty promising there. So yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah, and it's kind of like what Baker Mayfield likes to do. I yeah. think he's, I think he's realizing longevity in his career is going to come from like, you know, short passes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, all right, cool. Anything else on this game? No, that's it. All right, let's move on. Next, we got Minnesota at Atlanta. This is the one I really got to hear from you, what we're doing here. Um, you had this full slate of games to choose from and you chose, I know. I know. you chose Taylor Heineke versus what's this guy? Jaron Hall. Jar Jaron Hall. Um, so, yeah, at least I know Taylor Heineke. I didn't know anything about Jaron Hall. He's <laughs> was apparently a rookie from BYU. Yes. Um, tell me what, what you're thinking of here. Well, any quarterback, any BYU quarterback, you know I'm all behind them, right? <laughs> That's so false. You're <laughs> only behind. Wilson. Yeah, you're only behind Wilson <laughs> when they're winning. When they're yeah, losing, um... you're ready to ship them out. <laughs> all right. Uh so I picked this because uh, based on the matchups, we could look to target some serious overs in the Minnesota passing game. Um, they have the sixth best offensive pass block win rate. Atlanta's defense has the third worst pass rush win rate. Um, so I am going to take a chance on the rookie quarterback here. He's got a nice low line at 190. Uh, Will Levis, also another rookie quarterback, uh, played Atlanta last week and had 238 yards. So I can back to back rookie quarterbacks, you know, go uh, have nice days against uh, Atlanta. I think uh, if Levis could do it, Hall could do it. And I mean, just look at yeah, he's he's behind a great offensive line. Right. Look what Cousins was doing. I mean, he's got he's got weapons. Uh, he's got time to throw the ball. I think, uh, you know. He'll probably regress as the season goes on and gets more playing time. But I, I like I, I kind of sometimes like these uh, rookie quarterbacks in their first start. Atlanta doesn't have any film to prep or anything, you know, so I think he could be in for a nice day here. Are you uh, are you on board? Or do you think this is silly? Uh, I, I don't feel super confident putting, uh, you know, my, my money behind a guy who's got career 23 passing yards. Um, they have a little bit of film, right? I think he played um, he played a little bit of the second half right yeah. last week. Yeah. Uh, but not a lot. Um, so I hear you. I mean, 190 yards is not very much in the NFL. No. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Like, I don't have yeah, an opinion on this one because there's just not enough data to really. So I would say if you play anything on Jaron Hall, play half a unit. But like you said, there could be value there. The guy could be good. So oh, it's actually, um, I see there wasn't lines on FanDuel yesterday. Uh, it's down. It's 185 and a half on FanDuel. Yeah, Even I see better. that. I just yeah. adjusted it. Even, Even better. better gonna need, yeah. Going to need those five yards. Um, <laughs> all right. What else? Anything else in this game? Yeah. Um, so uh, if I if I'm expecting him to have a, a decent day throwing the ball, he's got a couple good weapons. I know you always like to, you know, these these rookie quarterbacks, you like to look, you know, look at their tight ends as a, a little safety net there for them. So I think Hawkinson over four and a half receptions uh, is a nice spot. He's gone over in seven of eight this uh, season. Uh, tight ends have cleared in six of eight against Atlanta on the season. Uh, so I think that is nice to get five receptions. I also like Jordan Addison over three and a half receptions. Uh, that's minus 140. He's gone over in three of his last four um, and had seven each of the last two weeks. So very promising there. Um, but both of those are kind of kind of pricey at minus 166 and minus 140. So I thought we could put the two of them together 
and get okay. plus 180 on DK. Uh, I'm liking that as a little uh, as, as a play here. Hawkinson right, five so you... and Addison four. Oh, Hawkinson five or six? Five. Okay. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, yeah. Really good hit rates. I think, you know, I don't see, I don't see Hawkinson staying uninvolved, right? Like he's, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to, he's going to be involved. Um, and Addison, you know, is, is kind of the primary receiver there now. So I think that's yeah, a good play. Out, so, yeah. yeah, I like that. Good. Let's go with that parlay. You like that? Yeah. I mean, you might as well throw, you might as well throw the quarterback in the mix too. Maybe for if, yeah, yeah, 150 sure. yards or something like that. Like throw yeah. all three of them in. You'll get and, that and, up to plus 250 or something. Yeah, probably. something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. We should let's look at that after. That could be that could be a nice thing to post up. I'm not posting that on X, but I uh, I do like it maybe for my own <laughs> personal sanity. Um, all right. Anything else on Minnesota? Uh, no. I, I think you know the other strategy that I've talked about in the past is I think you got to look at the running backs when you, um, you know, when you play these uh, when you have these rookie quarterbacks in. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't like uh, rushing yards by any means um, in this game. I don't think that's a good play for Madison, uh, but I think rush attempts is is, uh, is a good play. Uh, so I just want to talk through which of these two you like better. You can get Madison for 11 and a half, um, which he's cleared in uh, four of his last six, uh, or you can get Cam Akers at eight and a half, and he's cleared that in uh, two straight. Um, I don't those trust guys. Akers. I, would, I mean, if I was going to pick, I would for sure go Madison, I think, especially with the rookie quarterback in there. I think they're going to go with the guy that they – he's been with the team longer. They trust him more. Akers is – I don't know what to what to expect with that guy. Yeah, I tend to agree. Akers is just getting there, right? He cleared it by one uh, uh, one and uh, one and a half and, and a half, the two games that he did clear, whereas Madison, if he does clear, he's going to clear it by like four or five. So. Mm. Uh, so I think that's a really good value. I mean, I, I think I think he'll easily get 15 touches in this game. May not go very far, but I think they're going to keep running the ball. So <laughs> nice. We can get behind that. Maybe we'll throw that in the parlay too, and just try to get a plus one. Put all our money game. behind the Vikings here with the uh, <laughs> with it, having won how many games? What, what was their what's their record again? They're four, that's the thing. They're four and four, so they're like not out of it. Are they four and four? Wow, I, I didn't. Didn't realize. they just trade? They just traded for somebody too, right? Um, so I don't think their plan is to keep this rookie quarterback. Uh, hold on, I'm checking. Kobe Brissett, maybe? Somebody not very good. Um, yeah, I, would, I would imagine. So. No, Josh Dobbs, they just oh. traded for. Oh, really? Oh, because mm-hmm. Kyler's coming back. Gotcha. Yeah, so I would I would also, um, I would do your homework on that too and just make sure there's not a plan to give um, Mr. Hall a quick hook in this game and put Dobbs in. Um, I'm sure you can read about that out there and just make sure that Dobbs is not um, – uh, not going to come in and, like halfway through the game. If he, if there's a potential of that, then I would lay off the quarterback and just play the receivers because I think yeah, that's a great sure. play, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so anyway, you think he could it. come in that they just traded for him? He could he could come in and play that quickly in the same week he got traded. Josh Dobbs has played. Josh Dobbs has played for like 14 NFL teams. Yeah, he could he, he he could go into the CFL and play tomorrow. Yeah. Like the, the guy's just <laughs> he's ready to go all the time. So yes, if anybody could do it, it would be him. All right, a lot of faith right. in, in Dobbs. All right. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's move on. Actually, we we coming back to the early game. We saved that one to the end. Uh, we got the Germany game, Frankfurt series, uh, Miami at KC. This is like this is gonna be a lot of fun. This game. So this one's at nine thirty in the morning, I think. Um, and it is the first time I believe that Tyree Kill is playing against KC. Yeah. Would have been better if it was in Arrowhead. That would have been awesome. But yeah, let's, we'll take Frankfurt Germany. Yes. Uh, um. All right, I, uh, I I definitely like Tyreek in this game. I want to find something on him. I like him going up against uh, the old team here, and uh, I think I, I have the play. So Casey has the seventh worst pass rush win rate. <clears throat> um, they have allowed the ninth most uh, wide receiver yards before catch, the 12th most wide receiver yards after catch. Uh, so I like that. Also, uh, the eighth most targets to wide receivers over the last five weeks. Uh, so I think... Two is going to have a nice day here against this uh, Chiefs defense, throwing to Tyreek, also throwing to Waddle. Let's start with Tyreek, though. Um, you can get him at, uh, I think his line six and a half. I actually ended up doing a parlay of these two, but I think their straight lines are also probably good, too. Uh, I think yeah. he's six and a half, and Waddle is, uh, Waddle. what's Waddle? Four and a half? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't even see Waddle out here. Oh, no, there he is. Uh, Waddle is... Up five to and five and a half, but it's okay. plus one ten, so yeah, you yeah. can bring that down. Yeah. So I actually, so if you if you leave Waddle there, you see he's cleared four receptions in every single game this season. So I actually yep. have him in this parlay at four receptions and Tyreek at six, which is also very nice. He's cleared that in six of eight this season. Uh, 
you get the odds on that at minus 110. I thought I thought that's really nice for these two guys. Six receptions for Tyreek, four for Waddle. Um, if you wanted to like ladder it a bit and put Waddle at five, um, the odds go up to plus 135. Uh, he's had five plus receptions in four straight games. Um, so I think this is uh, a nice spot. But that that nice minus 110 for the six and four receptions each is uh, is very nice. Yeah, I mean, you, te- you tend to get better odds parlaying these types of plays together because they are basically competing for the same uh, receptions, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, not to jump around too much, but while we're on Tyreek, I actually liked, uh, I liked almost the same play that you just did. Oh, yeah. uh, I brought Tyreek down to six receptions, uh, which you just said, six for eight. And mm-hmm. I, par- I parlayed that with uh, Kelsey uh, at six receptions as well. Um, put those two together, that's minus 104. Oh, nice. That's, that's pretty good, right? So both of them were six of eight. Uh, I think Tyreek was, what, four games in a row? And uh, and Kelsey's been uh, uh, every game since the first game of the season. So Nice. Good. I like I like that. Yeah, both of those are good. I like we're, we're both on Tyreek uh, parlays here. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to know. I mean, I think he'll have a big game, but this is, you know, with the travel and the time zone yeah, changes that's and all I'm that, you got you to be careful with this, this game, right? Yeah, I agree. I like the receptions, I, you know. I, I'm I'm careful on the yards. I'm a little worried about the travel and these overseas games always are a little bit iffy, but I feel like if anything, two is going to be looking for some like quick passes, these quick slants. They, they like that. They like that style offense. So that's why we went with the receptions. I think, you know, four quick passes to Waddle, six to Tyreek, uh, or if you take your, your, uh, I mean, Kelsey's just uh, golden at, uh, at six receptions, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and he likes the, the big games, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, like he'll get, he'll get pumped up. He won't want Tyreek to steal the spotlight. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah this will like that. be fun. I like that. All right. Nice. Anything else in this game? Uh, that's all I had on this game. Uh, here's, I'm, I feel bad saying this because I'm going against my guy, but I got to point out Patrick Mahomes has had an interception in almost every game this season, right? Mm. He didn't have an interception against Chicago and he only played uh, three quarters in that game and, mm-hmm. uh, and they were running the ball like, you know, most of the second half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he didn't have one against Minnesota, which was, I think, one of his better games uh, of the season. Uh, he had, uh, yeah, uh, almost 300 passing yards in that game. So I think, you know, and he threw two, two last week against Denver, which is not a particularly good defense. So yeah. I think in this, like, weird environment, I think um, Mahomes to get a um, an interception at minus 105 is pretty good value. Um, I also think Tua, <laughs> Tua fits in the same camp. He throws the ball so much. Uh, he's also had um, uh, an interception in every game except for two. So I think both of these guys are going to throw a pick this game. Um, I think I would probably, if I had to choose one or the other, I'd probably choose Mahomes to throw yeah. a pick. Um, but I think they're both, they're both uh, potentially could throw it. And if I could find a place to parlay them together, I'll put them together for a uh, uh, both to have a pick. Yeah, I like that. I, if uh, if you ask, I was actually going to say I think I would prefer Tua. I like the fact that uh, two of the last three weeks, you know, they played um, – they play the Chargers and they play Denver twice. They had two. Uh, this is this is the KC defense. They had two picks on on Russell Wilson in the game you were at. Uh, they had two picks the following week against Herbert. Whereas, like if you look at Mahomes and in, uh, Miami, they've they've given up like you know I think it's what is it four and four four games they've picked the quarterback four they haven't but never more than one. So I just I like the little bit more volume from the uh, the KC side and more recent. Um, so that would be my lean on. Uh, on two of there. And obviously the odds are uh, indicative of, of that being a little bit uh stronger play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So I, th- I think these are both good spots, but yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Probably two is probably a better one, but I don't know. I, I feel like I've been just like playing for Mahomes all, all season and he just keeps throwing picks. So yeah, um, so, something seems off there. Like he just, he doesn't seem totally himself. Um, yeah. Maybe he's just saving it up, but anyway, uh, nothing on uh Rasheed Rice. You, you seem to play him uh, every week. No, no. What do you got for me? No, I don't have anything. I just, uh, I was going to play his, um, his yards because he does seem to be the most consistent target for uh, Mahomes. If you mm-hmm. look the last three weeks, 72 yards, 60 yards, 56 yards. Uh, this is at 45 and a half. Um, but he doesn't get a lot. Of, he doesn't get a lot of receptions, right? He's kind of hovering around that four reception mark. So I took a pass, but I just I thought I'd bring it up because I know you've been on him quite a bit. Yeah, nothing was really. I mean, uh, most of the stuff in the model here from the, for like you know Miami against opposing wide receivers, not great. A lot of stuff in the red here. So I just kind of you know, and given the uh, the international game, I kind of just uh, was uh, playing lightly here. All right, um, let's flip from the morning all the way to the night. Um, we'll just talk about the Sunday night football game real quick. Uh, not a yeah. deep dive. But we got Buffalo five and three at Cincy four and three. Uh, Since he's minus two, the total in this game, the reason why I wanted to include this one, 49 and a half. So just like the Chiefs game, 50 and a half, this one's going to be another 
high scoring one. Um, anything standing out for you in this game? I mean, based on the line play, you know, mismatches in, in uh, the line play, it would uh, lead us to look into some overs on the Buffalo passing game uh, and unders on the Cincinnati um, passing game. Uh, those would be the uh, two. But I don't know about I faded Joe Burrow last week and got got burned on that one. I think that extra rest uh, that, you know, the, the bye week helped him uh, quite a yeah. bit. Cincinnati's really rounding into form here. So I, I wouldn't be so uh, keen on uh, doing another under on Joe Burrow. But uh, I think some some overs on Buffalo could be in store. You got you got something in, in that department? Yeah, let's start with Buffalo. Um, I just like Josh Allen pass attempts. Um, I mean, look at that, 35 and a half pass attempts. Um, you know, he's cleared that in, what is that, for this season, five of eight games. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's a pretty good play. I think you're getting good value. Uh I think he yeah he put he had 42 pass attempts when they played uh that was back in the playoffs right last season yeah um, that other game uh, where it was that, that's who they were playing when uh hamlin got hurt right i think all those stats are erased from the record but i'd be curious to see i, I bet he was uh, up there in pass attempts in that game as well yeah yeah that, that game's not even popping up on here because i think it's just like a avoided they can, yeah they, they voided all those uh the stats from that game yeah um, but yes, if I remember that game was like a lot of fun, it was like, yes, before, yeah. before that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that's a good play. Um, in terms of who I like him throwing the ball to, I think, uh, Kincaid is a good target, uh, in this game. Let's go mm-hmm. to receiving yards. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, you can get him at lo- as low as 38 and a half. Uh, he's done that in two consecutive weeks. Um, so I think that's good. I think his receptions at three and a half is probably even better, but that one's juicy. Uh, minus 150, but if you can parlay that with something, I might put like Kincaid three and a half receptions along with um, uh, along with the passing attempts for uh, mm-hmm. uh, for Allen. That could be a nice little parlay there. Any thoughts on that? Okay. Yeah, I uh, I like that. I, I, yeah, I feel like this is the sort of game where uh, I don't know th- these these two big armed uh, quarterbacks. I just this is a this is a super fun game. So so excited that it's on Sunday night. It's gonna be uh, great to watch. And yeah, I, I think uh, I think the passing game for both these teams is probably. Uh, probably good targets. I, I I'm, I'm even thinking maybe do something like a burrow Allen, uh, just yeah. for a lot of offense and maybe uh parlay there. Oh, you can't parlay their pass attempts, right? No, but you could parlay yeah. their yards, yards bring, yeah. bring them both down a little bit or, or have them both go over 300 or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's nice. Yeah. I mean, burrow didn't uh, have a great game when they played in the playoffs, but that's a different environment, right? The playoffs. Yeah. Are, um, burrow had his line is 270. And when they played last time he had 242. And Josh Allen only had 265. So neither of them like were bombing away in that game. But mm-hmm. uh, this does have the makings of like a heavyweight boxing match where they just keep like, you know, touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. So that's what it uh, feels like. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, all right. Last play on this one. I just I wanted to point out this trend. I don't know if I'm going to play this or not, but um, I kind of like Joe Burrow for 14 and a half rushing yards. Uh, it's funny because this early in the season, this was down as low as like eight and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's up to 14 and a half after. Um, last week when he put up 43 but i think last week was honestly the first game where he was actually healthy yeah. um so what i really liked was his attempts last week he went uh from rushing the ball like two three four times up to six attempts uh and he must have uh you know busted a yeah 20 20 yarder so i think this is prime especially against a um uh the buffalo defense you're gonna like this so if we just look at the rushing yards uh on props like cash and we go to the quarterbacks look at Look at the quarterbacks against uh, Buffalo so far this year. Baker Mayfield cleared with nine, 19, Mac Jones, 11, Tyrod Taylor, 24, Trevor Lawrence, 31, uh, Tua, who doesn't really run anymore at seven on a line of six and a half and Sam Howell had 18 on 16 and a half. So, um, you know, basically five out of the last six quarterbacks have cleared against Buffalo. I think it's probably a good spot for Burrow too. Yeah, I would be, uh, I would have been hesitant up until you saw what he did last week against, uh, San Francisco. Uh, so yeah, I think, uh, that's a nice spot. It's probably uh, lower than uh, you're going to see it if uh, this continues. It'll probably be uh, some nice value there. It's probably going to be higher next week. Yeah, and the one thing he did well against Buffalo in that playoff game was run, right? He had yeah, 31, yeah. Uh, 31 rushing yards on six attempts. So I think I think he's good for five or six attempts. I think he'll be running the ball a bunch now that he's uh, starting to feel healthier. So Yeah, Trevor Lawrence, seven rush attempts in uh, the game against Buffalo. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even see this line was available, but I'm, I, I think I almost even like the three and a half attempts um more yeah right you can get that for plus 105 so yeah, dude, I think Tyrod I taylor had five trevor lawrence seven uh just over the last few weeks so yeah that's nice yeah let's go with that three and a half rush attempts all right, all right. um and let's uh let's wrap it up with a little discussion of monday night football you ready all right for this? i'm ready 
All right. So we talked about my team. You you uh, you ready to talk about the Jets again? I am. I am. I, I have some plays on the Jets here that I'm liking. All right. So Chargers three and four taking on the Jets four and three. Uh, imagine that, right? With Zach Wilson, the yeah. Jets have a winning record. Yeah. Although I did kind of stole that game against the Giants last week. Yeah. Um, uh, plus three and a half, and the total is um, 40 and a half. So first of all, I think Jets getting three and a half points at home is probably a good play. Um, I think that's nice. Yeah, yeah um, I think that is. What do you like? All right, um, let's start with the Jets here. Um, so matchups, we've, we've, we've been through this. Chargers are a great team to target uh, opposing passing games with. Uh, they give up a ton of attempts. They're in weird, silly games every week with, uh, you know, that, that are always pretty close. So uh, I don't think uh, they're, they're blowing out the Jets and, uh, or whatever. So I, th I think you should see a decent passing game from the Jets here. I like Wilson. I, they weren't out yet, um, but I'm going to be on his uh, pass attempts. It was 31 and a half last week. I'm assuming it'll be there again at 31 and a half. I, I don't mind it, even if it is 32 and a half uh, in this game, given, uh, you know, it was 31 and a half against the Giants. Uh, I could see it being 32 and a half against the Chargers here. He's gone over in his four of his last five. Um, I think this is a uh, this is a great spot for him against this, this Chargers team that uh, quarterbacks have just been eating up. Yeah, the Chargers um, run game seems to have really improved a lot uh, over the last couple of weeks. Right. They're only allowing now 93 yards per game. So I think that's going to force uh, Wilson into a passing situation. And quite honestly, the Chargers offense has been really good, too. So despite the Jets defense being solid, it is possible the Chargers could get in front and then force, um, you know, Wilson to be throwing. So, yeah, I, I like this spot a lot. I, I also was looking at this one, but it wasn't out yet. Yeah. Um, so I will be on that when it gets out. And then the guy he's going to be throwing to, uh, I like Garrett Wilson here. Uh, longest reception, 23 and a half yards. He's gone over in five of his last six games, averaging 27.7. I love the last two weeks. He had 12 and 13 targets uh, from Zach Wilson over the last two weeks. And this is amazing. Against the Chargers this season, 11 receivers have cleared this line uh, this season. I'm not going to read them all out, but you're going anywhere from uh, River Craycraft. Don't even know who that is. With 20, <laughs> with 20, a 24 long reception. All the way up to Traylon Burks had a 70-yard longest reception. Justin Jefferson, 52. Tyreek, 47. So the big guns, uh, they, they come out. And, and Garrett Wilson is one of those guys. So. I like this. Love that play. I had it written down here as well. Um, there we go. I'm also about to go to Fanatics after we get off the show and buy a River Craycraft jersey because that's an <laughs> awesome name. River Craycraft. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Anybody else on the Jets? On the Jets? Uh, no. Give me your Give me your Tyler Conklin play. Come on. How did you know? How did you know? I just know. I know. It's been three weeks in a row now. Four weeks in a row. Well, no, we we were we were on him. We took a break last week on Conklin. Oh, Luckily, well, Jets, were, Jets were on a bye. Just Jets were, Jets were on a no, bye. they played the Giants. Oh, that's right. Two Jets weeks ago, they were, yeah, on, yeah, they were yeah. on a bye. But um, right. yeah, so it has been two weeks since we played this one. Okay, and that was hitting every week uh, against the Giants. He had two targets and went over two. So remember, the magic number for Conklin is three targets. He gets three yeah. targets. He's got like a eighty-eight percent chance of getting three catches. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Great value. This was, I remember this was like minus 130 or something like that when we were first yeah. playing it. So because mm -hmm. of that one week, it's down to minus 117 to go over um, or minus 125 on FanDuel. Uh, but yeah, look, look at what, uh, look at what the tight ends have done against, uh, against the Chargers. Cole Komet uh, last week had 10 catches. Uh, Travis Kelsey had 12 catches. Uh, TJ Hawkinson had eight catches. And even our boy, uh, Akonguo, uh, who, had three catches on the last drive of the game last night to cash for us. He had four catches. So, um, so I think, you know, the only, only tight end uh, in recent games that didn't perform well against them was Jake Ferguson. So I think he's a good spot for him. I think he's going to continue to get some receptions in this game. So Conklin over yeah. two and a half. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I looked at that, but I, I figured you were going to be on it. So I, uh, I let you, let you uh, do the research on that one. Uh, one other spot just to ask you about receiving yards. What do you think about Brees Hall receiving yards? Um, it's all the line is all over the place. Uh, wow, it's actually gone up quite a bit. Uh, I actually even earlier this morning I had it as low as sixteen and a half, what and it's it gone mean? up. It's saying it's saying twenty six and a half. Wow, so that line must have been like incorrectly set. It was nineteen and a half on one book and sixteen and a half on another, and it's all the way up mm -hmm. to uh, uh, to twenty six and a half. So uh, still probably will cash, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lay off uh, this one. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. I didn't, I didn't refresh my uh, browser here. I see it's still. It was 19 and a half on Fanduel, 16 yeah. and a half on DK minus 150. Yeah. So I, I don't know if some news came out. Um, let me see what his rush attempts were because I was looking at that as well. 
So while you're looking at that, the uh, so the Chargers are a great team to target uh, running backs through the air. Uh, they are um, they've allowed the uh, fourth most targets uh, to opposing running backs, the most red zone targets to opposing running backs. So a Brees, what's the Brees Hall anytime touchdown? That might be uh, that might be nice. Yeah, plus uh, one twenty five, and he's done that in three straight weeks. So yeah, that's that's nice. All right, um, we know what we're submitting for our parlay uh, touchdown uh, play with the rest yeah, of the great call. Uh, props that cash gas. Great call. All right, cool. Uh, anything on the Chargers side? Yeah, I got one. Um, with this Jets defense, uh, our model's uh, telling us to uh, target unders in the Chargers run game. Um, so I'm going to uh, – Eckler does most of his damage through the air. Uh, so I'm going to fade him on the ground here. Under 47 and a half rush yards, minus 114 on FanDuel. He hasn't gone over this since week one against Miami. Um, and he's only gone over in five of his last 17 games. Uh, the Jets are another team that's really – uh, given up, I think they've given up the second most, yeah, the second most targets uh, to opposing running backs. So I think any damage Eckler does is going to be through the air. It's going to limit his uh, his uh, ground game, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll take this under on this his rushing yards. Yeah, I mean he's getting the attempts, but uh, he's not doing a whole lot with it. He's he's like a different guy this year. It's something must uh, must still be nagging with the injury. So yeah. And he always gets banged up. He's good to uh, get a little banged up and come out of the game or have to sit for a couple series. I don't know. He's right. uh, the guy's always injured. So, uh, yeah, I, I like the under on him. Yeah, Josh Kelly's getting, you know, seven-plus reps too. So, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Very nice. That does it, right? Six games? That does it, yeah. We uh, we made it. We got Monday Night Football in too. We got some, 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 uh, some exciting games uh, this week um, between Monday night and Sunday night and Sunday early morning, 6.30 a.m. for me. Uh, out here in uh, LA. So I'll have to uh, get the coffee really cranking for uh, Sunday. But um, <laughs> nice work today. Uh, we are definitely going to get a few of these picks posted up on X in addition to, I think we got three or four uh, NBA picks already up today. Um, so let's continue the success with uh, NBA, uh, continue the success with NFL, and uh, let's all make some money this weekend. Yes, sir. Let's do it.